We're still in the minority. I was just reading, in fact, a report that came out in February of uh, this year. It was called uh, the Ramp Up Study. And apparently we are still less than 15% women in the mining and exploration industry workforce. So we're still quite a minority in the industry. The panel discussion that we just had, um, I think what we've seen is a definite improvement over the last 20 or 30 years that the women on the panel represent. And uh, there are probably a lot of different reasons why there aren't as many women working in the industry as we'd like. I think partly it's been that um, there haven't been many role models. There have always been a small number. It's increasing, but very slowly. It's, uh, it's a difficult industry because there are a lot of challenges to try and come up with a way to balance your home life, your family life with your work life because quite often, especially the exploration, or well not just exploration, also the mining side, there's often a lot of travel, a lot of time away from home, and so that adds an extra challenge. But the, the fact is, there are an increasing number of women taking on a broader range of roles and responsibilities in the industry. And the reality is the industry is being faced with uh, projected labor shortages. So there's a huge opportunity, I think, for women. So in terms of encouraging women to enter into the industry, there's a tremendous number of opportunities. There are good jobs, good paying jobs, and quite a range of different aspects to the industry, financial, technical, it can be geological, you can be an underground miner if you want to be. Um, one of the panelists today was talking about driving mining trucks and then one of the people in the audience also commented that there are a number in BC, a number of, in fact, Aboriginal women who are driving mining trucks. And so it's, yeah, it's a good paying job, it's a tremendous job, it doesn't require a lot of physical strength, it just takes training and uh, willingness to do the job and I think, again, an appreciation of the opportunities there. And this is where more role models will, I think, help continue to change that number of women and attract more women to the industry. Definitely the average wage, which there's a, there's a again, there's a broad range of skill sets in the industry, so there's a broad range of, of salaries, but the mining industry is one of the better paying industries out there collectively. Um, if you have the training, if you have the skills or the education um, training required, there are some very well paying jobs in the industry. So I would say that yes, the, the opportunity to have a higher income than you would in the service sector, most aspects of the hospitality sector are probably there in the, the mineral and exploration industries. But there is usually a certain amount of training um, and skill sets required for many of these jobs. If you want to be a mining engineer, you need an engineering degree. If you want to drive a haul truck, there's a lot of technical training to driving that truck. But I think you can start with a driver's license and probably a high school education, maybe some technical training. So there's, there are different entry levels into the industry and then there's a lot of training that you can get actually through your career, through the job. There's a lot of on the job training essentially. What do you like to do? If you right. I chose geology uh -huh. as a career, partly because I, I, it wasn't my first choice when I went to university, but after a couple of years at university, I discovered that I really liked science, I'd always liked rocks and minerals, and I really liked being outdoors and hiking and camping. And so for me, the combination of being outdoors, looking at rocks, and living in a tent was not a bad thing. Now, not everybody likes to spend their summer living in a tent without a hot, cold, running wild water in a shower. Um, but that was the choice I made, and I really, really enjoyed it. But there's an entire spectrum, too. I was doing uh, field work in very small, remote camps. There are many exploration companies that run large exploration camps where there are a lot more of the amenities of, of home at your disposal, right up to then, if you're working at a mine site, there are some really, really nice mine sites where 
I would consider the accommodations and the food much more luxurious than anything I get at home. So the working conditions may be tough if you're underground or in an open pit mine, but again, it depends on what job you choose to do. And again, one of the messages that came out of the panel discussion today from all of the women talking about the different jobs that they were involved in is the best choice you can make is to do something you really enjoy doing and then pursue that. And the rest of it just seems easy. Well, I think the, the still the predominant um, number of women in the industry are more in administrative and clerical positions. That's the reality. Is that's where if you take the um, the entire spectrum of jobs in the industry, that's where the majority of women are. But as I said earlier, there are increasing numbers of women in the more technical and trades positions, mm -hmm. in the engineering and, and geoscience positions. Those numbers are increasing. Maybe not as quickly as I would have liked to see. I've been in the industry now, I guess, about 25 years. And, um, and the numbers are, are growing, but, uh, but slowly. Another aspect of my own career, I feel very, very fortunate that I've had the chance to see parts of Canada that most Canadians will never see because I've been working in very remote areas. And some of them are places that people pay a lot of money to go and see if they're an outdoors enthusiast who enjoys right. remote locations. Right. So I've been lucky, in, in, from my, my own standards, what I like to do, I feel I've been very lucky to get to see some of those places and, and work in those places. So yeah, for me it's been a very good career choice. It's a kind of engineering that if you're working uh, with civil engineering, you're doing some uh, plans, you're doing uh, calculation, uh, you're su you supervise the job that you planned before, and it's the same thing with mining. We, uh, we are working uh, with uh, mining uh, exploitation and we are doing plan and to drill, blast, uh, and mine the deposit that we, uh, we have to mine. And supervised the, the work we plan and really it's a it's same thing that uh, any kind of engineering works. It's really a challenging job because it's always different. Mining it's not something that you uh, can reproduce from a mine to another. It's really new. Every deposit are different. Every mine are different, then it's something that challenges you all the time. It's what I can do to do the best design. A program that offers some internship is really the best one because, like I said, at the university you learn techniques and it's good. It's good to know techniques, but really. Uh, and feel is sometimes very different and you need to uh, see some mind before being able to uh, to do mine engineering. Then all the program that offer uh, internship, like I say, at the university you learn to learn. <laughs> that's, that's really, right. <laughs> that's really what I, I realized.